As a kid, I loved looking forward to things that were good. Things like Christmas, birthdays, getting my driver's license, going away to college for the first time, and before college, the last day to any school year when that final bell rang and you got on that bus for the last time just before summer. Anticipation for the good things is a feeling like no other. Anticipation for something that isn't good is, well, not anticipation, it's dread. And that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the feeling of looking forward to something that's good that's just around the corner. As an adult, this has become counting down the days before our family trip to our favorite place in the States, Charleston, South Carolina. Jamie and I took a trip there last July for our anniversary and well, we fell in love with that place. And now we're planning on taking our kids back there this June to see a Charleston Battery soccer game. And we can't be more excited to show them all that we experienced including showing Morgan the locations to where Outer Banks is filmed. I really can't wait to get back to Charleston and take our kids along. I'm sure we all have our stories of anticipation, childhood stories, adulting stories, and as we read God's word, there's another group of folks who might have had the same anticipation story as us. Check this out. It's found in Joshua chapter 1, verses 10 and 11, and it says this, so Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get your supplies ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land your God is giving you for your own. For 40 years, 40 years, the Israelites have been wandering around in the desert waiting for just this moment. For 40 years, they couldn't enter the land that had been promised to them because of their disobedience to God. You see, God promised Abraham that there would be a promised land for the Israel nations to come out of his son, Isaac. And after God freed the Israelite slaves from Egypt through Moses, they ran low on their food to live. So much so that they wished that they were back in the good old days of slavery in Egypt where they didn't have to worry about where their food came from. But God, didn't leave them to starve, and instead provided manna to each and every one of them. At one point, God told Moses to send 12 spies into the land of Canaan, one spy for every tribe of Israel. The spies went out and traveled the land for 40 days. The spies came back and reported to Moses what they had seen. The land was flowing with milk and honey. There were many places to grow food as farmers, but there were also many strong clans of people living there and many of the spies were afraid of them. Caleb and Joshua wanted to lead the Israelites to take the land right away. They weren't afraid of the Canaanites. The other spies lied and said that they saw very tall and strong people, some of them the size of giants. When the Israelites heard this, they became angry with Moses for leading them out of Egypt. They were afraid too and cursed God for bringing them there. They forgot God's promise that he would help them. God was angry with the Israelites for their complaints. They didn't trust him no matter how many signs and gifts that he gave to them. Moses prayed for forgiveness on behalf of the people and he said, forgive the mistakes of this people according to the greatness of your steadfast love. And God responded, I do forgive just as you have asked, but I will punish this generation of people for their lack of faith. You will wander in the desert for 40 years, the same number as the number of days you spied out the land. Then, after 40 years, Joshua gives the order to the people, get ready. You only have to wait three more days. Can you imagine what they must have been feeling? Can you imagine what they must have been thinking? The anticipation must have been something like they hadn't felt before. The Israelites wandered in the desert for 40 years. Moses and the Israelites had to have struggled at times throughout those 40 years. Life was probably hard at times. I don't know where you've been these last 40 years, the last 40 months, or even these last 40 days. Maybe you've been through hell. It might have been rough at times. Things might have been a struggle and life may have certainly been hard and in your life you may have felt like you were wandering in the desert. But God is telling you right now 
that your promised land is waiting for you right now to cross over. God is telling you right now that there is a better life to be lived and that he will provide for you if you will simply put your trust and your faith in him. And while he has a promised land for you to find, just like the Israelites, in order to find it, there's a couple of things that God wants you to do to be able to see it. First, keep your eye on the word of the Lord and follow it. Then you will know which way to go. You will know how to live. Joshua chapter three, verses three and four says, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priests who are Levites carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before. You see, in order to know how to get to our promised land, in order for us to know how God wants us to live, we need to keep his word continuously in front of us. When we do that, then can we know how to get to the promised land he's provided and how to live. And second, consecrate yourselves to God. In other words, promise yourself to God and follow him. Devote yourself to following God. It's surrendering all of you to all of him. It's a simple recognition that every second of your time, every ounce of your energy, and every penny of your money is a gift from God and for God. Consecration is an ever-deepening love for Jesus, a childlike trust in your heavenly Father, and a blind obedience to the Holy Spirit. Joshua chapter 3 verse 5 says, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. When we consecrate ourselves to God, when we recognize that every second of our time, energy, and money is a gift from God and for God, then can He do amazing things with and for and through our lives. Then can we enter our promised land. I don't know where you're at right now whether you're just entering your desert or whether you feel like you've been wandering in your desert for years. But I do know this, God wants you to enter your promised land. He has promised a better way of life and it's right around the corner waiting for you. Can you feel the anticipation? I can and God can too. And so the question is, are you ready for God's promised land in your life.